Thank you all for sticking with us. I think we are probably the last panel of the week for many of you. And uh, I look forward now to bringing some, a little bit more balance back to the session and picking up with the whole themes of this week of, of water and food security. I'm very pleased to be bringing that food and agriculture element back into our uh, discussion today. And so just a, you know, a couple quick comments. I think we've had some wonderful uh, discussions to date. Um, and as we heard earlier on today, we know with food and agriculture, it is a sector uh, that is being influenced by global change and by climate change. Projections are that it will be increasingly impacted by climate change in the future. Those are trends and patterns that we're already seeing in some of our work with farmers around the world, uh, be it coffee farmers in Indonesia that are dealing with new uh, pest and disease pressures that they didn't have to deal with in the past because with different temperatures are coming in different bugs and other critters that are creating havoc with their yields. Uh, to coffee farmers in Chiapas, Mexico, where there are models suggesting that by 2030, the area of suitable for Arabica coffee production is going to decrease from about 260,000 hectares to about 60,000 hectares. So that is a tremendous uh, shift. And while that's long term, uh, farmers need to be thinking about that for their children and their future generations. Industry certainly needs to be thinking about that in terms of where they're going to be getting their coffee in that example. Uh, at a time when companies are trying to grow their business, those types of, of shifts in production region uh, can be quite alarming. And also, as you heard, you know, those are exactly the types of challenges that we are trying to address with the farmers and the communities that we work with around the world. I loved hearing the discussion earlier, thank you, Ed, about natural infrastructure, because that's exactly what we're trying to bring into the discussion of how do we help farmers uh, deal with the change they're seeing now, prepare with the, uh, prepare for the change they may see coming, and bring in the role of nature in, the, in that instance um, as part of the solution. And so as an example, we work with some very small scale livestock producers in South Africa in some very dry, arid regions where if it gets a little bit drier or it rains a little bit less, it can be a real catastrophe in a region where the majority of the population is already below the poverty line and 90% of their income depends on livestock. And so there, we are employing a variety of you know, what may be seen as traditional conservation tools, but applying them to protect sensitive wetlands, to protect riparian areas, combining that with support to farmers in uh, better management practices, rotational grazing, stock reductions, supporting them in income and livelihood diversification um, to build stronger livelihoods and to ensure water flows throughout the dry season. And so that's, you know, I, I appreciate you bringing that up earlier on. But it's, but we're going to have some representatives from further down the value chain. And I think that's an important part of this discussion is that no one from farmer to consumer goods manufacturer to retailer uh, wants to see greater volatility in their supply chains. No one's going to benefit from that. Um, and that could be one of the impacts of, of climate change. And so that's another part of our work is, you know, working with the companies and many of the leading companies around the world, including those here today, have made uh, some important sustainability commitments with regard to eliminating deforestation and supply chains, increasing purchases from smallholder farmers, increasing uh, supporting adoption of, of sustainable agriculture. And so, you know, that's another part of our work is helping them implement those commitments and helping smallholders uh, uh, comply and link into those market forces. And so these are all connected. And uh, I'm very pleased to have uh, several representatives here today on our panel. And if I could uh, ask them to go ahead and, and come on up front. Thank you.